All right, guys, big day around here. I am about to interview President Donald J. Trump. We are doing a sit down, although it's a slightly different sit down because he is doing it via the phone, the, the classic style of interviewing uh, from an undisclosed location. But before we start, I wanna say one thing, which is that his team made it very clear. I can ask him absolutely anything. Nothing is off the record. Nothing is to be hidden or not to be asked. And will I get booted off YouTube for this? I suppose we will find out. So here we go, my interview with President Donald J. Trump. All right, President Donald Trump, welcome to the Rubin Report. Well, thank you very much, David. Great, great to be with you. Uh, so, President, what are the chances that I don't get kicked off Twitter and YouTube and Facebook just for talking to you? Oh, I think you have about a 10% chance, a good solid 10%. <laughs> 10% getting kicked off or 10% staying? No, no, 10% staying on, actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy. It, this is a crazy world, and uh, let's see what all happens. I think they're overplaying their hand, but we'll find out about that, Dave. Yeah, so do you miss Twitter? That seems to be the big question that everyone wants to know. That was your thing. Do you miss it at all? So something happened that I think you've seen, and that's very interesting. I do press releases like I used to. You know, the circle yeah, goes yeah. round and round, right? I do press releases, and it seems that a lot of people are waiting for those press releases. And if you look at the, of all places, the New York Times did a story a week ago about the circulation of what I'm saying is essentially as big. It's very big. And the word is getting out. I did a couple of them today. I like because I'm not confined as to uh, number of characters, but you know, the number of characters, you don't want to keep it too long anyway. Okay. That's one thing we all learned maybe from that. No, I, I think, uh, I think we're doing very well with that being said, I'll be on social media in the not too distant future. We're looking at a lot of options. We had, uh, hundreds of millions of people. You know, if you look at, uh, we had 91 on one site, we had 10 on another, we had 36 on another, we had POTUS. We have uh, a lot of people and a lot of people on Facebook. And I, I hear it's become very boring, to be honest. And I hear in particular, Twitter has become very, very boring. And a lot of conservative voices have gotten off. Some have been thrown out and a lot of them have gotten off. And I hear Twitter is not doing well and it's lost its voice. And when I started there, like 11 or 12 years ago, it was not a success. I mean, it was not a, I don't know who was going to make it, but it was not a success. It became very successful. And I think you're going to see a lot of people are going to be finding other, other. Well, there's a lot of platforms out there. That's what we're looking at, getting the right platform, a, a perfect platform. And I think uh, you'll see something fairly soon. Yeah, that's great to hear. And as, as you may know, I've been talking to, to some of your guys about Locals.com, which is the tech company I started. So we shall see. Good. Uh, so, you know, I've told my audience many times that one of the reasons that I, uh, di I didn't support you in 2016, but then I did in 2020, was that I started going back and watching old videos of you on Oprah and on David Letterman and on Phil Donahue. And I realized that you were basically saying the exact same things 30 years ago that you're saying now. And I, what that made me wonder was sort of, did you always, you know, they would always ask you, Oprah would say, oh, you should run for president or Donahue would say it, but did you always feel that somebody else was going to do it and then you just got pinned into doing it? Because you didn't seem to really want to do it, actually. You kind of wanted somebody else to do it from the way it, I read it's it. It's a great, I've, nobody's ever asked me the question that way. And it's very interesting. Yeah, I assumed that somebody, else would do it because people cannot be that stupid to be taken advantage of by China. And in particular, at that time, if you go back 20 or 30 years, it was Japan was really doing mm -hmm. a number on us. And it's all the same. And frankly, it hasn't changed because whether it's China, Japan or many others, I mean, it's uh, they're all taken. But t China, obviously, right now is the head of the pack. And I always felt that somebody else and nobody's ever asked it this way. I've always felt that somebody else would do it. And they didn't. And it went for a long time, you know, those interviews. And one thing you have to say, Dave, if nothing else, I was consistent. I mean, yeah. it was I've seen it, too, where I'd, I've seen a, a recently a replay of some of the statements and they're almost identical to what I say now. And I was right. I was right. We have now 30 trillion in debt. 
We have a country that is just, it's just ridiculous what's going on in so many ways. I talk about the border even then, people coming in and, uh, you know, the wrong people coming in in many cases. And you see what's happening with the prisons are being emptied out in other countries mm -hmm. and they're coming into our country. And I, I was, uh, yeah, very consistent. It's very interesting. Yeah, when did you realize that you were gonna fully have to say what you thought? Because when I started going to some of your rallies, and I, I'm here in crazy Los Angeles, I was going right. to the Trump rallies in Beverly Hills, and it was a joy fest. Like, it was, it was truly unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And the main thing people would say to me when they would come, they'd say, Dave, you know, I'm just sick of being called a racist and a homophobe yeah. and a bigot and everything else. And I met these people. These were the nicest, joyous, happiest, Great decent people. Americans ever. But when did yep. you realize that you were just going to have to sort of walk through that fire and, and take those, those labels? So a lot of people think I was going to run, like, for a long time. You know, they were asking me that question 30 years ago, as you would say. And uh, Oprah was, and Donahue was, and they were all doing it. And, and I'd give the answer that I doubt it, because believe it or not, Dave, I'm a very honest person. And, you know, I'm not sure that you can be... <laughs> honest and be in politics. Okay. And I never really thought I was going to do it. A lot of people thought I was going to do it eight years ago, 12 years ago. I think probably it really hit me when I turned down a big extension on The Apprentice. We, you know, the show was a very big success. I did mm -hmm. it for 14 seasons. Can you believe it? And then uh, I watched, Schwarzenegger. I, watched, I miss Moffitt. Joan Rivers. I miss Joan Rivers, man. She was, oh, yeah. she was the best. Oh yeah. She wanted to come on and they all wanted to come on. I watched Aaron Burnett you know, now, but she would beg me to go on the show. She, she was on three or four times. She would virtually beg me to be on The Apprentice. And now I watch her hit from, you know, all sides on MSDNC. I don't watch her very much, but I see she's on there and I assume she says nothing but bad, but she would beg to be on, as, as did others, as did many others. But the show was a great success and they wanted to extend it a lot, like at the highest level. They came over to my office and I said, no, I, gotta, I have to do this. I have to run for president. And they thought I was kidding. They didn't want to hear it. They wanted to extend the show. They ended up getting Arnold Schwarzenegger, who failed badly, as you know, as often, <laughs> yeah. like a matter of minutes. And they also, during the time, they get Martha Stewart, and she failed. But we had a great success, and it was for many years. And I said, no. And, you know, when you turn down a primetime show, long-term extension, it's a lot of money, no matter how rich you are, but it's a lot of money and a lot of prestige, and I turned them down. The top executives of NBC came over, and they wanted to make a deal, and I turned them down. And I guess so. Uh, that was really when I thought I was going to do it. And then, of course, uh, the famous uh, ride down the escalator, <laughs> and that was it, Dave. That was it. What I rode it. down the escalator with our great first lady, that, uh, that turned out to be it. When did you realize how connected the sort of mainstream media was to the swamp? You know, you were talking about draining the swamp and obviously the right. media was going after you and you started punching back and Republicans or conservatives or people on the right usually don't punch they back. Don't. Did Yeah, did you realize it? They was don't. it by the time you were president that you fully realized or it was really, was it that first debate? No, I thought it was bad, frankly, but I never knew it was this bad. And now it's worse than ever before. It's now it's so ridiculous. I mean, you see uh, where uh, Biden gets up and says things that nobody can believe or doesn't say things. And they say, could that be FDR? FDR, great speaker. And, uh, you know, now now it's it's out of control. But uh, I've always known that they were shaky, but I used to get great press. You know, before I ran for, I guess that's probably one of the reasons I won. Before I ran for president, I got a lot of great press. I was getting, I was the king. I was getting press like nobody. And, uh, you know, I did fine. But I also understood uh, where and how they were functioning as much as you can. Nobody understands the press fully, to be honest with you. I don't care how well you do with it. But once I announced, and when I made the first speech in Trump Tower, once I got down from the escalator, I will tell you, uh, I would say the press turned radically different. And now they've become very corrupt. I mean, they're really corrupt. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing to watch. We don't have freedom of the press anymore. We don't have free press or fair press. We have a very, very corrupt press. And, and you don't even have to get into the argument, although you say plenty. You, you have strong opinions on it. But we have a very, very corrupt media. 
Yeah, no, they're they're long gone. They're activists, not journalists. They're gonzo. They're, they're gonzo. We're doing a big one in uh, Ohio on Saturday night, and people are already lined up. And, you know, there's just been a great connection to the people. I've had a great connection to the people. And it's amazing because when you get virtually 100% bad press, and Fox is a whole different ballgame from what it was, too, by the way. But when you get 100% anti-press, it's just... Uh, uh, look, you have some really great, great people who should have gotten the Pulitzers. You have people that called Russia, Russia, Russia exactly right. They don't get the Pulitzers. They give Pulitzer Prizes to people that were totally wrong, <laughs> totally wrong. It's a disgrace. But when you have that, and it's amazing that even in the last election, I got far more votes in the last election and did far better than I did in the first election in 2016. And it's amazing that you can have the press so against you, big tech against you, and you end up getting 75 million votes, which is the highest anybody's ever gotten as a sitting president. It's, it's pretty amazing. But what it shows you is that the people of our country get it. They really get it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, are, are, you must be incredibly psyched to get back out there with the people. And I know you're doing some shows with Bill O'Reilly and the rallies are gonna start up right. again. I mean, to me, it's just that people just wanna be proud of America again. I can't wait till they start up rallies, whether you're there or not, just to get people out there and holding flags yep. and being proud to be Americans again. Well, we're doing a big one in Florida. I guess it's July 3rd and we're doing a big one in Ohio on Saturday night and we're, we're gonna start doing it just to give people some pride again. It's not, you know, it's early. Uh, but it's not really early because you know they want to know they want to have a voice out there and you don't get it from the media they don't give you a fair voice so you have to do it a little bit differently and you know in the one case sending out those press releases they get onto twitter and they get onto facebook and they get onto everything i mean it's uh it's been a, that's been amazing but the voice that really gets out of, is the voice at the rallies because they cover the rallies. You know, they cover the rallies because of ratings. The one thing, ratings are most important, okay? Mm -hmm. If you get great ratings, they're gonna cover you no matter what you say, and we get a lot of coverage, and I think it's very important. And that's what the people want, because they love the country, they hate open borders, they hate, you know, sanctuary cities, uh, protect people that are criminals in many cases. I mean, the sanctuary cities, they hate defund the police. Think of the policies these people have. Defund the police, sanctuary cities, open borders, let anybody come into our country, criminal or not. And it's supposed to be all wonderful. And now cancel culture and all of the other things you're seeing on the school boards, right? And they're supposed to win. I don't, I don't believe they can win with that. And Because those are not 50 percent issues. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, uh, as an example, we talked about energy, right, during the debates, during the campaign. And we're energy independent, but we're not any longer. Now we're going to have to start buying from the Middle East and Russia and all these other places. We were energy independent. Now we're not because they've canceled a lot of deals, canceled the pipeline. How about canceling the pipeline, but letting Russia have its pipeline to Europe yep. and Germany? Yeah. And it's just, it's, I don't believe that those policies are anywhere near 50%. But I think Yeah, I think my 10% that you predicted about staying on YouTube may have just dropped I think to 5%. But that <laughs> Let me reduce it, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Let, let me just ask you a couple other things because I want to be respectful of your time. Were, were you ever really were you ever really worried about impeachment? Because I saw you. I, I don't know if you remember this, but we we actually met briefly at Mar-a-Lago uh, back in December of uh, right. I guess it was 2018, and I had seen you speak that afternoon at a Turning Point event, and it was in the midst of the impeachment thing. Dan Crenshaw went on stage with you and brought out his piece of paper that showed you know he didn't vote for it, and uh, but but everybody was saying the walls are closing in. He's free out, and I saw right. you that night, you had no tie on, you were relaxed, you were laughing. Like, were you ever really, really worried, or even on the second time around? Well, they had no proof either time, they had no proof, and frankly, you know, I have a lot of good relationships in Congress, in the Senate and in the House, and I will say this, Richard Nixon did not. Now, he also had, you know, 300 tapes, right? That didn't help him. <laughs> the tapes weren't exactly positive. 
they were a total disaster. But I have a lot of great friends in Congress, uh, Jim Jordan and uh, so many others, Banks and uh, Debbie Lesko. I, I just have so many great friends. And I felt in the same way in uh, the Senate. I have a lot of great friends in the Senate. And I didn't feel that, assuming I was innocent, I didn't feel that they would uh, sell me down the river. And I, you know, I felt very confident. And, you know, you'd see a CNN where they say he's walking the White House, he's walking in his room. And I'd be in the Oval Office, right? I'd be, you know, not even I, I'll never forget. I was with a group of people, very, very big business people from another country having to do with bringing business to this country. But I'll never forget it, Dave, where the television was on and CNN was saying I was up in my bedroom storming <laughs> the bed. And I'm in the Oval Office with these business people trying to get them to invest in America and they said, wow, that's really dishonest. I said, that's what I've been saying. No, there's tremendous dishonesty, Dave, tremendous. All right, last question for you for now, and then I hope we get to do this in person at some point. Sure, uh, will. This is, I never, I've literally never done this in any interview. I never ask the audience to ask a question, but I thought let's try this with President Trump. And there, there were many versions of this question, which basically is, that pretty much everybody doesn't think Biden is in charge. Nobody really thinks he's right. running the show. The, the, so the question is something to the effect of, who do you think is really running this thing? Is this the Obama machine? Is this the Clinton machine? Is this something else? What do you really think is happening right now? I think it's a group of people, and uh, a lot of people say Susan Rice and Obama, and a lot of people say perhaps Clinton to a lesser extent, although she never got along with Biden. And she's very, very angry because she said, why didn't you do that for her? You know, she was saying. Because it's it was far easier because that race was far closer than the race we just had, the, the 2020 race. And uh, but you have people that it's it's a, it's a group of people. I don't think it's Biden, frankly. And I you know, in many ways, wish it were, because that's the way it's supposed to be. But I don't believe it is. And maybe uh, Harris, to an extent, although I don't think she's distinguishing herself with her her border trips. And now all of a sudden I said, as soon as I announced I'm going to the border, I actually made a minor bet. I said, watch what happens. She's going to announce. And right after I announced, as you know, she announced that she's going down. I guess she's going tomorrow or something. But she would have never gone to the border. And I'm going next week. So uh, I think it's just a group of people. I mean, think of it. When he signed those 17 uh, declarations, special orders, presidential orders, he signed them. And he didn't really seem to know what the hell he was signing. No, he didn't. And when you think of them, they were all sitting there waiting to be signed. And they were radical. They were radical. They were Bernie Sanders would have never asked for most of the things that he's signing. This is far worse than Bernie Sanders ever imagined. And it's pretty amazing. So a lot of people ask that group, who is it? It's really I think it's a group of people and, you know, the same names, but it's a group of people. And they get together, and this is what they want to do, and they're destroying our country, really All destroying right. our country. Last question, then. I promise I'll let you go. What does President Trump do for fun? You're about to hit the weekend. It's the summer start. And what are you doing for fun these days besides golfing? I know you're golfing. Well, I do. I, I try and get to play golf because it keeps me uh, a little bit busy and a little bit of exercise, and it's good. And, uh, and I exercise a little bit. But what I really do is work. I mean, I work. I'm running a business now. And very importantly, I'm very much involved in the endorsements. You know, our endorsements have meant so much. If I endorse somebody, they win almost almost 100 percent of the time. And a lot of senators and congressmen and many others. We just won in North Carolina, head of the party. And we won in Georgia, head of the party. And we won in Texas, as you know, and Louisiana, Congress and, and you know, just the endorsements. I think it's 228 and two over the last fairly short period of time. 200, wow. Think of that, 228 wow. and two. So they're coming from me at Ohio. We have a good guy in Ohio running, two good guys running for Congress. And we have a lot of good people running. So I've done, I've done a lot of that. We're having a lot of meetings with people that want the endorsement. We're trying to get people that you would like in there, Dave. I'm glad to hear it. Well, Mr. President, I really appreciate you taking the time and enjoy the weekend. And I, I hope we can connect again. We will. And thank you very much. You've done a great job. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Take care.
If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.